What is up guys, don't forget to subscribe, check out my channel playlist for individual tutorials on logic sculpting, animation, music, and more if you need help with that kind of stuff. Thank you so much again for watching the video. This will explain puppet interfaces. Puppet interfaces are pretty much animation signals. So whenever a button is sent to this puppet interface, a control sensor, the button, let's say left, uh, or you know, the thing that makes the control sensor move is put into walk, it'll set off a signal to make your puppet walk with animations. Now you can actually plug animation straight into the control sensor by pretty much putting it into the timeline of the animation then the animation starting. So if you wanted to put your walk cycle into here, you could do that also. You can also plug it into here, your puppet interface. The puppet interface also has things on the left side. The things on the left side can be assigned keyframes. Here's what these keyframes are. So jump ascent, let's say that's whenever you start jumping. Jump peak, that's whenever you're at the top of your jump, the peak of your jump. And jump descent is whenever you're falling from your jump. So essentially, what this is a stop motion. But it's stop motion whenever the variables meet the, reach the certain height that they need to reach. And the keyframes are put in here. Here's the settings for the keyframe. Sometimes you'll want to have this as a slow power off. And sometimes you won't. It just depends on what kind of character you're making. Sometimes you'll be using a, a, a signal manipulator to get your keyframes correct as possible. The things on the, the, the left side are pretty much inputs. The things on the right side are outputs for the puppet interface for things like, you know, the jump or running strength. So whenever you're at your like peak running or stuff like that, you can read through it as you need to go, as you need to read through it. You can put animations inside animations to where the variables reach these things. Or you can put it into here, use signal manipulators to where once things get higher, it does the same thing as the puppet interface. Or you can use variables, whatever you like to use. You can also use two puppet interfaces if you want to keep things more organized. This right here is the, pretty much essentially the same thing, um, except they're using it for these. They could have just put it in this though. You can also assign probably, you know, animations, two different animations for combos. You can use probably two control sensors for combos in combination with a signal manipulator. I haven't tried it, but it's something I thought about. So, if you wanted to, you can also click these to quickly animate your your keyframes for uh, jumping and stuff like that. These things might need to actually be labeled these labels and put into the proper places. And this will allow you to quickly edit from this, the puppet thing by pressing L1 and square on it or L1 and X and then L1 and square. You may need to hit and have this red thing up here to get to that option. That way you can quickly edit your keyframes. As long as it's plugged into these on, over here on the right things, you can check out which ones you need to plug it into. I'm sure that's how that works. Connectors are what allows you to animate, and that's important for the puppet interface. Now, if you're actually creating puppets from scratch without the blue marquee thing down here, I'm not sure what it's actually called, then you won't be able to use a puppet interface. There are perks to actually sculpting like that. You can actually separate sculpts. So let's say we made a full sculpt and not um, in limbs. Like you can only connect things in limbs, if that makes sense. Then you can actually separate the sculpture by cutting out what you don't want there, then saving it, then undoing it to where you see the whole sculpture again then deleting what you saved and then replacing it with what you saved. And then you can put the connectors in there and pretty much you can actually animate it and just use the control sensor. That's how you would do things from scratch. And then you, you, you would use the movers 
the mover tool to get it to move. And those, uh, the mover tool runs on X, Y, and Z axes. X, Y, and Z represent 3D. That's why it's only X, Y, and Z, because it's 3, if that makes sense. These are the speed options and stuff like that you, that you can assign for your character's puppet interface. Right here, you can turn off the procedural walk if you want to. It says that a lot of people do that, so if you're doing it if you want to, you can turn all this off. If you're actually creating a puppet, you want to make sure that this is next to the feet. You don't want your puppet all the way up here in the marquee down here because then your puppet will be in the air. You want to make sure that you drag it down by pressing L1 and X and dragging it down, or if you can just drag it down on top of it, then you can. Collisions and labels. So right now, this is labeled as friend and this is what it collides with. If nothing is labeled, then it's labeled instantly as unlabeled. You can use an impact sensor to pretty much make it to where it senses the labels as if this was um, pretty much connected to it or put inside of its puppet logic then it could sense labels and take damage. This is the hitbox. Collidable, movable, all that stuff right here. That's what all that is. For a more in-depth tutorial on that, just check out my hitbox tutorial. This right here is pretty much how you assign pieces of the head and other things. You won't need this for every type of enemy or, or character, but you will need it for uh, a lot. Some characters, like Sonic characters, don't have a bunch of limbs, if that makes sense. Now, to sculpt off of a puppet, to sculpt off of a puppet, if you wanted to do it quick and easy, what you would need to do is pull out a puppet. And this is where the... Uh, interface is found and all that great stuff. That's where the puppet interface is found. This is where all the puppet stuff is found. This is where the connectors are found. If you need to get the variables for the connectors, what you'll do is go here and then pretty much just look at the variables for the connectors. The ankles are pretty much ball joints just twisted to the side. That's also the kneecaps. That's how you do all that. That's how you do those part of the limbs that bend. And pretty much you just look at the settings by pressing L1 and square on it. Looking at the settings. And that's how you do that. Sometimes you'll use different ones. Like these are the main ones that you'll use. This is the basically the only one that this uses, I think. But then you can use these on the side. These two might be the ones that bend ankles and kneecaps and then this stuff's like for tails um, and ropes and stuff stuff like that you use this right here for like just you know stiff things you can use that for that and just read through it it'll tell you what it, you use it for and pretty much how I got to this how I got to this menu what you'll want to do is press L1 and X on a puppet And you don't want to delete it yet. You want to delete it whenever you're in this mode. That way you can see, you can still see those joints. In order to see the joints, you have to go here and turn it on. So, now we're on the last part of the tutorial. I'm going to go, actually no, there's two things that we need to talk about. It's keyframes, we talked about that in the beginning, the main part. But if you want to animate keyframes, what you want to do is set them to linear, both of them. You want to put the first one right here. So that's the lower one. Then you'll want to copy that, drag that over here. Then you'll want to uh, edit it. Press L1 and X to edit it, and then drag it up here. 
and that way that'll work as an onion skin so that way you're not like starting all over you're starting from the last place it left off from for that because you copied it and that makes it a lot easier to make animations and then you just put it in a timeline and that's how you can get like running animations and stuff like that you can look up other tutorials on how you know animation tutorials how many frames you need for running cycles and stuff like that all that great stuff and the action recorder is pretty self-explanatory the puppet the, the record possession just don't put it in a timeline and it'll work the way you want it to if you're making it from scratch I think I already explained the movers and stuff pretty much you're just sculpting and then um, you're just not using a puppet interface you're just sculpting it and then con using the connectors and then after that you're doing all the animations then what you want to do is just use the buttons without the puppet interface you'll want to use the buttons connect the buttons to the animations as well as the other logic you can also use signal manipulators to actually get down pat your animations and when they should happen. You don't have to though, because this right here is good enough. So that should explain the puppet interface as well as a bunch of other things for you guys to get you guys in gear. Another thing that you can do, if there's things that you want to learn and you don't know the settings for the connectors, you can always search up the, some things uh, somebody else did and pull it out and then look at their settings to see how they did it, look inside and see how they did it, see how many pieces it took, and that'll get you down. Then look up tutorials on how to sculpt things if you want to use the base puppet model without having to do too many steps. That way you can just sculpt a hand by deleting this, and then you'll have your connectors done. You'll probably get things done within half the time or more. So this is the puppet interface. This should be all you need to know. If there's something else you need to know, just ask me in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope this helps. Peace out, peace out, peace out. There's a whole lot more information than you click for, but that's why I always make my videos like this, to where you guys learn everything, and I feel like you guys need to know about puppets and stuff. Uh, so there's a bunch of videos that I did this for where the puppet stuff is explained within the video also right after I explain the main part of the video of course but that's why I do this because I know people need to grasp this in order to create their games and a lot of people have great ideas I've seen them so I hope this helps you guys and if it's said I'll stream at the top feel free to come into the stream if there's something you want me to test see hear play watch your animations I'd love to do that and my tutorials that they came up at the top feel free to click them and there should be videos on the end slate at the end here that you can click to see videos in my channel playlist just click on my channel name then click on playlist it's a bunch of tutorials you guys can watch for whatever you guys may have trouble for i hope this helps guys and i hope you guys learned about puppet interfaces You can also assign variables and stuff to this stuff too. Left output, right input, mainly control sensor inputs. And it, um, I guess you can, not sure, like the main thing I usually do is control sensor inputs. And L1 and X this. After L1 and L, then L1 and squared, you can assign speed and stuff, turn speed, all that great stuff. You may want to make sure you're on play. And that's pretty much how you do it.